My next guest calling the Rams and Bears game this weekend, Mark Sanchez. Did you hear those fun facts I said on our YouTube exclusive break? Are they true? Mostly true. What's not true? Uh, well, it actually wasn't a real booger. Oh, okay. It was okay. a joke. It was a fake booger wipe. A fake Phantom booger, booger wipe. wipe, if you will. I, but, you know, uh, I yeah. understand men mostly, but I don't know that I understand a fake booger wipe and the effect it has um, on your species. Well, because as soon as I did it, Brunel was like, ew. Like, it was more of just like, a, you know, in practice, you, you're you next to somebody and you're having this conversation, your eyes are locked, and you take your eyes off them and go, oh, heads up, heads up. Like a ball's coming. Yeah. And then they freak out and you just walk away. You're trying Leave to them. avoid me like asking you, how do you lose your shirt before a steak dinner? Um, no, so the White House mm -hmm. invited me plus one. I took to Brickishaw Ferguson. Okay to a state dinner, as in State of the Union yes. or United States. Correct. And so I called my brother and I said, hey, this is crazy. I'm going to the White House for a steak dinner with a K. And he goes, <laughs> what? He said, did you say steak? And I said, yeah, they said it's a steak dinner. And he goes, what are you going to bring, A1 sauce? What are you talking about? It's a state dinner. So I learned the difference. And we so. love that. You've learned a lot in your career, and you're always really sure. honest and genuine about it, and you're crushing it in the booth. It's so fun to listen to. We're going to get into all of it. But before we do, let's get to the what everyone wants to talk about, your doppelganger. Um, obviously, this is, you know, the villain from... Um, I actually cut my hair off. Sorry? I chopped it all off. You did? Let me see. Okay, let's see that. I'm, I didn't see. Oh, I didn't. Wow, it's I'm done? Scared. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. Good. That was messed with me. Can no, you please, does, can you please part the like, side? No, part the side. He does like this deal when he gets all crazy can at the end of the movie. Pull? No, so, he does this. You have to go. No, 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 no. Look, look do you have to part it to the side? He do, yeah, I'm out on that. Why? Because. Oh, but so Colin Crisp is a badass. I love that too. I'm glad, I'm glad you remembered his name. It wasn't in the script and I forgot it. So thank you for oh, that. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I for, but it was a, an epic movie. I just, I died seeing all of that. Um, okay, we have football tonight. We got Dak and the Cowboys. We got the Giants that's at MetLife. Uh, you know that, that place very well. Dak was heard saying, jump off the wagon if you want, was the quote. He said that to fans after the Ravens loss on Sunday. You know Dak, you were with him in Dallas during his rookie year. W should we stay on the wagon? I mean, it's more of a, um, it's a quote out of frustration. It's, um, you know, hearing people chirp and clapping back a little bit. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, it's just like when Aaron Rodgers told the fans to relax a couple years ago. You know, when you're really good, when you know there's always something good coming around the corner because you have that positive attitude like Dak does, that's kind of your mentality. Like, okay, leave us alone for a while if you want, but don't come – you know, clamoring back when everything's, when it's a high tide. You know, if you want to stick with us, stick with us the whole time, be loyal. So hmm. I totally get it. Um, I think more than anything, forget the comment. It's the, in my opinion, the mismanagement of the fourth quarter last week against the Ravens. Going for two all the time, uh, the timeout usage or not use it. Like it was, that was tough to watch because that's an outfit that has won a lot of games and understands uh, time management. And I think they just really had a, a lapse in, in some judgment and decision-making, but um, they, they ended up climbing back into the game and because of a couple of decisions, time management-wise, couldn't quite overcome the hole they dug themselves in. Do you think it's a lapse, like a one-time thing? I mean, it's a Mike McCarthy thing you're saying. Does that happen tonight? What do you expect to happen? Who wins this one? Oh, geez, we got to make picks here? Yeah, I got to call what, these like no, I can't one. be making picks. I got to stay agnostic. I'm, that, not, I'm above fine. afraid here. Do you, do you think that the lapse, a lapse happens tonight? Because it's, it's interesting to hear you say that about that Ravens game. No, I mean, I, I hope not. It's, um, you know, listen, everybody makes mistakes. These coaches, yeah. it's, it's a split-second decision. Do we go for two? Do we not? I didn't see the reason to start going for two every single time. You had a chance to – they went for it on like a fourth and long instead of kicking a field goal. Like the idea of it goes back to a philosophy of stack your chips, stack your points and hang around till the fourth quarter. If you can do that, you're going to have a chance. And most of these games, especially now, I wish I could have broadcast the games before I actually played hmm. because you see this thing. It's like the aerial view of a parade and you can see the start 
you can see the finish and you can see all the turns and twists in between. Most of these games are a one score game entering the fourth quarter. Most of these games are lost, not won. One team will make a catastrophic mistake. The other team capitalizes, gets the good field position, gets an easy field goal, whatever it is, pick six, return a fumble for mm -hmm. a touchdown. And that's the game. And everybody talks about, wow, what a great game. They play. Wow, what a great game. I'm not saying they're not playing great, but we're talking two or three plays in that fourth quarter that decide everything. So what does that mean? Stack your chips, stay around, stay relevant until the fourth quarter and see what happens. And I think when teams can do that, even when they're down personnel, yeah. like the Los Angeles Rams, those dudes hang around because McVay and Stafford know what wins and loses in this league. It's cold, stone cold, cold blooded execution and taking care of the football. Stafford did it with a bunch of guys that nobody's yeah. ever heard of last week. I mean, the guy's Michael Myers from Halloween, dude. You can't kill him. You can't kill him. It's unbelievable. He's a killer. Still less scary than the villain from Kindergarten Cop somehow. Uh, yeah, that. he's got nothing on me, though. <laughs> nothing on you. I love that you won't, you, you can pick the game. I like that you don't want to. Just, we're just going to wheeze a lot of that one. To talk about the game yeah. that you can't pick, because you are calling it, and that's Rams-Bears. Right. You alluded to Stafford and company. The Bears said they were going to let Caleb sling it, and oh, he's slinging it, Mark. He's on pace. This is so stupid. He's on pace to throw the ball 668 times breaking Andrew Luck's record by more than 40. They also have, like, the worst run game, I think, in the NFL. How concerned are you? Well, listen, there's there's a fine line here of are we developing the quarterback? Are we letting him rep it out, so to speak? Almost a uh, pickup basketball kind of idea. Just go play and keep playing, and some of the habits you're going to develop in pickup basketball aren't necessarily the best for an organized team basketball arena but or, or are we trying to win games right now because of the personnel we have and we think we're a good enough team to to really challenge other teams in the division those are hard to do simultaneously I understand that the biggest thing is if you're trying to play winning football and teach this kid how this game works to teach him to be like Matt Stafford and Peyton Manning and Drew Brees and Tom Brady well if you're teaching him that you got to help them out on first down. I mean, they're really struggling on first down, like bottom of the league, bottom three of the league, I think. And that's running and passing. Mm. I need some production. And a lot of it, a lot of it is just don't hurt yourself, right? They have so many pre-snap penalties against Houston. I mean, they're in second and 10, third and 10. Then you get Jerry Hughes and these dudes on the Houston team that line up in their exotic fronts on second down and third down. Now you got to block all these games. You just open up this whole other can of worms that you have to deal with just because you got behind the eight ball because you didn't know the snap count or because you don't have the discipline to stay in your stance or whatever it is. That kind of stuff can be eliminated. Once you do that and get him into some third and manageable, he looked way better against the Colts. They still didn't win, but he looked better. And here's the bottom line. We talked about stone cold, cold blooded execution and turnovers. Mm -hmm. He's got five turnovers in the last two games. The first game, he didn't play well. Bottom line, he did not play well, but he didn't turn it over, and they won the game. Yeah. The last two games, sure, he's thrown the ball better in spurts, turn the ball over, it's going to be really hard. And their credit to their defense. Their defense kept it a six-point ball game mm -hmm. or a nine-point ball game against Houston? Are you kidding me? I mean, the defense got to be looking over there, and – the funny thing is, I know exactly what they're thinking. I know exactly what he's feeling. Hmm. We did that my rookie year. We come out of the gates, go 3-0. and I just was the Rose Bowl MVP. I'm like, dude, this league is easy. Yeah. We're going to whoop everybody's butt. Let's go. Keep rolling. Then we lose three games in a row. One of them, I turned it over five times. Threw five picks in one game. So, And we still almost won the game. We had like 200 yards rushing, had a chance to kick a game-winning field goal, and we lost with five turnovers. So the defense at some point is going to look over at the young QB yeah. and the offense coordinator and say, hey, dude, come on. I don't care what it is. Just just don't give it away. Try, you know, try and make the plays, but just don't give it away. And so he's still going through that learning curve, and it's not easy, especially when you're as talented as he is. You think you can make every throw. Is he pushing 
Or is it the play calling? Because he, I'm looking, he's on pace to throw twice as many passes as you did as a rookie, Mark. Twice as many. Yeah, easily, easily. And the league's much different now, too. Plus, we had a great run game. We were built to win right away. I mean, we'd run, line up in uh, 21 personnel, a halfback, a fullback, a tight end, and two receivers in tight formations on third and six and run power and get first downs. That's how good our run game was. So we were a little different outfit than the Bears. Um, but if you're asking if he's pressing, you can't help but press on third and 10, third and 15, third yeah. and 17. Like the interceptions in the Houston game were on like second and 16 and third and 14 or something. I mean, you can't help but press. It's it's almost, it's Maybe human not nature. Press, but like, is he trying to do too much? Like, is that something that you see? I think he's forced to that try is. and do too much because of the situation. Give me a couple more yards on first down. Yeah. This stuff is yeah. all fixable. By the way, Great. it's not like they're cursed and they got no chance. They have more than enough to get this thing rolling. It's just, you know, a little different approach, I think. Yeah. And potentially a little more conservative approach would be fine. And then when it's time to be Superman, throw on the cape, big guy. It's fourth and 15. We need a throw. Go for it. You get picked off there. I don't care. Yeah, that, that's fine. But super clerk can't doesn't turn into Superman to go stop a misdemeanor traffic violation <laughs> in Metropolis. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, there's a comet and a bad guy, you know, attacking the city. Throw on the cape, dude. Let's go. Go be Caleb Williams. Go show me that. Yeah, but, you gotta, but, but who's the dispatcher taking the calls of like, what's important? Well, you know, that's Shane Waldron picking up the phone saying, excuse me, hi, what's the problem? How, how can we help yeah. you? You know, Superman at your service, right? So there has to be some, it's, it's kind of everybody. Yeah. I agree. Everybody's in on it. Bottom line is their defense can help win them a lot of games. Yeah. The offense can take care of the football. But there Somehow, is a point Jared, where that boils over, games. you're saying, where the defense is going to be like, what the, we're out, like, what are we doing? I I, I, I get it. We'll oh, see. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't think that some of the guys from the Jets, like Bart Scott, wanted to just punch me <laughs> in the face on the sidelines? I'm sure they did. Like, you, those guys would come over and be like, bro, you know we're wearing green tonight, right? Like, thanks. Got it. They As in, I'm throwing it to the wrong color jersey. <laughs> Um, and really then nude white fake boogers really. on them, so it's fine. It all worked. It all worked out. And like you're talking about, I mean, your rookie year was like insane. I like that you're saying that you wish that you could call games. It's a very interesting thought That's, that you wish you could call games and see like, the parade before oh, you ever third played. and thirteen, third and thirteen from your own seven yard line, and it's you know first quarter of the game. Oh, I can make this throw. From the booth, I'm like, dude, just hand it off, yeah. call a draw, you know, check it down, no big deal, move on with your life, let's go. But you throw the interception, the guy who was gonna go up and get a beer and go to the bathroom and reload on the hot dog is now <laughs> losing his mind in the stadium. Yeah. And now you gotta deal with crowd noise. And now they're knocking on the door to go up 14 nothing. You're like, oh my God, what did I just do? Yeah. And it's stuff like that from the booth, you just have such a good vantage point and it's like, you know, it's like playing video games. You're, it should be it should be required. It's what you want for a rookie quarterback. Yeah. The fact that it you just say cool. they the fact that you, you yeah. with the NFL. Yeah, the way that you just say hot dog and I just I just love. I was gonna say glizzy, but there yeah, we go. Show. There we go. I want to ask you. Uh, well, even just calling this game, so like in, in the booth, you make these jokes, these metaphors, like you make. It's why it's so fun to listen to you. Um, is it? Is it like? A, uh, how mindful are you about not being too favorable towards Caleb, given the USC thing? Is that a thing you think about? Because like Collinsworth, I mean, he just signed his deal. Congratulations to Collinsworth, the goat. We love him, but he's very aware of like I don't want to give the Bengals too much love, and then the Bengals fans hate him because they think that he doesn't support them. Like how mind mindful are you about it, whether it's a Jets game or a USC quarterback like him or Darnold? It's definitely something I think about. Yeah. The way I know is I'll never check Twitter, <laughs> but my brother, my middle brother Brandon is usually pretty good about it. And all I want to know, I don't need to know what people are saying. I just need to know, am I getting heat from both sides? Right. If I'm getting Rams fans that are like, oh my God, he's such a Bears homer. He played for them. He loves Caleb. He's a USC guy. And then the Bears fans are like, oh, he's an L.A. guy. He doesn't even remember Chicago. Like, he hates us, you know, whatever. If I'm getting both, I'm playing it straight. That's how I know. I and love so that. <laughs> my brother will just text me both. And I'm yeah, like, I love nice. that. Both is the Bro. word. Then, then you know. Everybody hates me. Success. This it's is great. great. It's great. Um, and, you know, I'm always going to – I don't want to be a quarterback apologist, 
I just know how much goes into the position. Yeah. I know what it requires. I know when it looks good. I know when it looks bad. And I've lived both of them. And so I feel like there's so much good insight that I can impart on, you know, the audience while being, you know, a little self-deprecating while hopefully teaching them something. Yeah. And, um, you know, having fun, but not being silly. And then trying to meet the moment, you know, meet the moment of the game when it's, you know, a blowout and it's 42 to nothing. You're kind of like picking up your driver's license, just reading off of it. Like you got, you're just empty in the bucket. But when it's a really good game, there's not much for me to say. You just let the game take care of itself, say what you're expecting and have fun. You're in a very unique position with one, one of the things I'm most fascinated by, and you can speak to this like you just said you like to. The Sam Darnold case study is unbelievable. This, of course, a USC quarterback, you know that very well. He was a rookie with the Jets, you know that very well, though you had very different experiences, but some of the similar adversity and all of that. Now he's playing with coach Kevin O'Connell, who was your backup with the said New York Jets. You know him. What is the lesson of the Sam Darnold case study? I think there's still plenty of tread on the tires after somebody goes through their first experience with their first franchise in the league, I think is the bottom line. But how do you get them there? How do you get Steve Young from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the 49ers to watch one of the best to ever play in Joe Montana, get them in your system, this West Coast system that's tried and true, and turn them into a Super Bowl champ MVP? How do you do that with guys like um, Zach Wilson? Mm-hmm. How about Zach? What dude's got plenty of tread left on the tires? You think so? They, they, oh my God! Put him in. You put Zach Wilson in Kevin O'Connell's system right now. You send him to L.A. Let him watch Matt Safford for a year. Send him to uh, Kansas City. Send him to San Francisco. These dudes will get the quarterback right. Now, are they guaranteed Hall of Famer, Super Bowl winners? Hell no. But they will play much better because they will start with a process. Mm-hmm. One, it's your feet. The timing of your feet and your eyes. They have to start in the right position. Just get me started. Okay. Right? Start the car, get back me out of the driveway, get me to the highway. Now, once we're on the highway, you got to make a lot of really good decisions really fast. Do I leave this exit? Do I avoid this crash? Do I need to slow down, speed up, whatever? That kind of stuff you'll learn as you go. But as long as you can get started, right. you at least have an opportunity. I and I think yeah. that's what Sam's benefiting from with Kevin O'Connell. I he's think, got his feet right, he's yeah. got his eyes right, and the timing looks so much better. And it's, it's, is it as simple as, I mean, what, don't we have to, and I have to take a break here, so very quickly, but I need you to stay through the break because I have to introduce you and talk about some college ball in the break. Uh, who's not getting, an, like, what, what isn't being talked about? Kevin O'Connell's getting, getting his love for his volume, his whatever, like he's putting you in the right position. But like when I think of Sam Darnold, I'm like, my goodness, ghosts and mono and dysfunct and revolving door of offensive coordinators and like the mental fortitude it takes to be able to be Put, I don't know, like, I feel like he doesn't get enough love for that. He never gets love for that. Somebody somebody had to remind him. It's huh. just like going through a bunch of relationships. Somebody had to remind him, you're beautiful. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. I love X, Y, and Z about you. Sure, all these things haven't worked <laughs> out so far because of whatever. Right. But I love your trauma. I love whatever you've been through. Let's work it out together. And that's Kevin? That's, that's all it is. That's Ke- like, that, is that, you know Kevin. Like, like that's, he's got oh, that. what? He'll meet you right where you're at. The dude's yeah. so good. He was in our quarterback room with the Jets and just added yeah. this level of peace to the room. And he was so smart. We all knew he was going to coach. It's like watching, uh, you know, Derek Fisher. Like, you're just like, yeah, that guy's going to coach. It's amazing. And so um, I'm so happy that they, these guys linked up and, and yeah. it's working out. Amazing. Okay, we're going to take a short break here. I'm going to talk to you about your Trojans in the break here, so don't go anywhere on the TV side.